Good evening. Happy Wednesday. Oh, midweek. Another week half over. Or half begun. I suppose it's all in how you look at it. I just think it's wonderful that it's Wednesday. And I'm thrilled to be here. And I hope you are as well. And I hope the week has been kind to you. I hope that things are going well, that you are healthy and happy and wiser than you were last week. It's always better to be a little bit smarter all the time, don't you? I mean, you know, they say with age comes wisdom. Well, you're a week older than you were last week, so you should be a week wiser. Maybe more, depending upon what kind of a week it's been. Anyway, I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad that it's Wednesday. Hump day. The day when we all stop and go, the week's almost over already, and I haven't done this, 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 and those things. And it's almost the weekend, but not quite. I've got two more days to go. And then you get to the glass half empty, half full kind of thing. It, it's either, gosh, what else is going to happen? What kind of a week is this going to be? Or, gosh, what else is going to happen? <laughs> I hope it's the first one for all of you. And, and I hope that, I hope that you're happy. I hope that you're happy. It's a choice, you know. Mm, really is. I mean, when things are falling down around you, sometimes you'd have to duck. That's important. But, but when you're finished ducking, can you find a good reason to be happy? To be glad that you're you living the life that you're living? Or does it need a little adjustment? Hmm. Well, that's kind of why we're here, isn't it? Do a little fine-tuning, if necessary. Ah, Dana, good evening. What a day, she says. Ah, uh -huh. I'm glad you're here, too. What kind of a day has it been? Just one of those days, or um, what can we do about it? Happy Wednesday, Lainey. Glad you're here. I'm checking in with Dana on what kind of a day it's been. When someone comes on and says, what a day, I don't know whether they're going, what a day, or what a day. So just checking in on the, um, the emotion behind the comment. It's been a good day here. We've, we've accomplished a great deal. And, um, and it's been busy. Grateful Wednesday. Hi, Susan. Oh, three hours at the vet. Oh, oh, Dana, so sorry. That's that's never fun. Fifteen minutes at the vet isn't particularly fun. How's the kitty? Is she doing all right? Susan always asks about Percival. How's how's your baby doing? I know it takes a minute for everything to catch up here. I'm about twenty seconds ahead of you, so if it seems like I'm vamping and just trying to kill time until an answer comes up. That's exactly what I'm doing. Cac's going to check in on it, so she'll let me know. All right. So, how are you overall? It's, um, it's another beautiful day in the neighborhood. The, the uh, marine layer went out. This is the weather report. The marine layer went out about, oh, 2.30. <laughs> Up until then, it was a gray, overcast kind of day. And then at 2.30, just from one moment to the next, it went from being gray and overcast to being stunning. The sun came out. The, the backyard just lit up like it was a summer day. And uh, it was beautiful. Hello, Kirk. Glad you're here. Oh, kitty stoned on morphine. Well... I guess that's not an awful way to be. Did he have surgery or or what's going on with the kitty? Let us know. He has a fractured incisor. A fractured incisor. I can't say that. He has a fractured incisor. There it is. How does that happen with an inside cat? Started to chew on something perhaps that was harder than it should have been? I know I would be completely dumbfounded if one of our cats came up with that, because they're all indoor cats. 
But cats do get into things, don't they? They do get into things. So, uh, yeah. Well, glad he's out of pain. Glad he's on his little trip right now. And hopefully he will feel better when he comes out from underneath the morphine. Our cat is doing reasonably well, Susan. Thank you. Um, you know, it's kind of a day-to-day -day thing. We know he has renal failure, and we know that sooner or later that will catch up with him. But he has good days and bad days, and, um, and we hope for the best every single day because he's just a love. He's just a wonderful, wonderful kitty. So... All is well, for the most part, in kitty land. And puppy land, as, as well. So. Your, your car has renal failure, too. My car has renal failure, yeah. Yeah, my, my car is at the vet. Um, yeah. It's, uh, diagnosis isn't good. Although it probably cost about as much as yours did today, knowing what vets charge. Um, it needed a new battery. It's been sitting in the driveway since March. And uh, the battery just went, just died completely. And AAA came out and started it up. And I drove it a block, and it stopped. So I waited a little bit longer when I finally realized I need a car for this weekend because I'm doing a wedding on Saturday. Um, I, I, I called AAA again and they started the car up again and we took it down to my mechanics. Um, it was the only one I found in Ventura and they're really good. They're just not inexpensive. Um, and said, I need a new battery. And they said, well, we're going to do our free diagnostic on it and see if there's anything else it needs. And I said, great, let's, let's, the price is right. Let's do that. I got that news today, and uh, suddenly a new battery, and um, what else am I getting? Brake pads, and um, it needs everything. It needs everything. It needs all of its fluids. They said need changing. All the when we belts, belts, fluids, yeah, belts, it needs braces. It needs braces. Yes, I think it does. It needs a colostomy. <laughs> oh, I hope not. Although it probably does. Anyway, it was a long list. And I said, so what really has to be done? And they said, well, all the fluids we're talking about are actually just right at, they need their, it's time to be serviced. But they're okay. It's not going to stop the car. If you let it go too long, it'll be a problem. But not that big a problem. But the belts and the ten, tensure, tensor, Wait a minute, and I'll tell you. Um, tensioner. Like pensioner, only with a T. The tensioner and the idler assembly. Now, it turns out the two belts are cheap. They're not a big deal at all. It's that tensioner. So, by tomorrow night, I should have a car with a new battery and uh, a tensioner and idler assembly and um, several hundred dollars less in my checking account. <laughs> but safety, Thousand dollars less in my checking on the road. account. But I'll be safe. I will be safe. I will be safe. I'm grateful for that. Um, because they really were making noises like, you know, your, um, your belts are literally cracked and could go at any moment. And I thought, oh, and I'm going to be driving to the wedding all by myself. And um, I don't want to get stuck on the way to the wedding. I got a flat tire one time on the way to, the, to a wedding. And that was bad enough. That was bad enough. But I was very, very close. And I just called and said, someone come get me and I'll deal with this tire after the wedding. But I don't want to have to do that with a belt where the car can just all of a sudden stop dead. So... You know, you can kind of flop along with, with a tire. So, there we go. Um, <laughs> that's been my day. I'd, uh, I wouldn't trade it, though, for three hours at the vet and a sick kitty. Yeah.
Sorry about the kitty. Sorry about the kitty. Hope the kitty gets better quickly. So, what's on my mind tonight? Wonder. Wonder. Being able, even on the worst day, to look out at the world and go, wow. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. I can see the ocean. Do you know on the other coast, the ocean is on the wrong side? I'd never get used to driving that way. That's always been my my thing. You know, if the ocean's over there, it's west. I got it. Um, now, I suppose that if you're in Florida and you're on the west coast of Florida, then the ocean's on the correct side. Boy, that's confusing, isn't it? Um, let's drop that one. For decades, decades, I have, have been in love with a little poem by Tennyson. And I had at one point a, a, a picture of a little boy squatting down. You know how kids just kind of squat on their hunches? hunches? And a um, little boy doing that, looking at a flower. A flower and the Tennyson poem was right there with it. It was just part of it. It was. It's not the entire poem. Um, it's actually just the beginning of the poem. Um, the poem is once in a golden hour. I cast to earth a seed. Up there came a flower. The people said, a weed. And I thought, isn't that how children look at things? And, and isn't that kind of the difference sometimes between grown-ups and children? If it's got petals to a child, it's a flower. It's a flower. Look, it's a flower. It's got a middle, it's got petals around it, it's got leaves and a stem, it's a flower. And, you know, somewhere there's always an adult who's ready to say, Charlie, it's a weed. Now, I've never figured out the real difference between a weed and, and a flower, or even a weed and grass, honestly, because weeds to me are usually green. And if that's covering your ground, isn't that doing the same thing as a lawn or grass. I guess it's all in how you look at it, huh? Now, if it grows where you don't want it to grow, I can see calling it a weed, just meaning that it's an alien thing and you didn't want it to be there. But that little Tennyson poem just keeps, keeps coming back to me. I don't know whatever happened to my copy of that. I loved that little picture, and I had it for decades. If anyone ever sees one, pick it up for me and I'll pay you for it. Um, but that gets me to where I want to get tonight, to get started. So, I'll start. Stick with me. It all kind of started for me with that poem decades and decades ago. But then, I found this, this in Daily Word which is the Unity publication. Uh, it was July 3rd, 2020, if any of you want to look it up. And it said this, Life is amazing. My heart and soul are touched as I pause to consider the sacredness of every single moment of my life. As I behold each moment as holy, I look at my life with wonder and amazement. To keep this awareness alive, I make time to enjoy beauty wherever I find it. I commit to being fully present to those around me, 
which deepens my connection to them. When I realize that each part of my life is infused with divine energy, I feel renewed wonder. As I look into a friend's eyes, attend a spiritual service, learn something new, or even when I tend to the more mundane aspects of my day, amazement continues to fill me. And I behold the divine in every person, all situations, and each serendipitous moment. There's that word again, serendipitous. It sounds so easy, doesn't it? I behold the divine in everything. Well, if you've got that on your mind, if that's where your focus is, then you will. But most of us have our mind on other things. We say, as good metaphysicians, that all that there is, is God. Yeah, yeah. And yet, well, it's not uncommon for us to leave some things out of that equation. Butterflies in the equation. Moths out. Sunny days in the equation. Gloomy days, wow, different. Composting, in, it's the ecological thing to do after all. Garbage, out. People we love, in the equation. People we don't care for, mm, maybe out. Now, we know better, of course. If we say God is all there is, then it's all that we are, and it's all that they are, no matter who they are, and no matter how they're acting. But that's not always easy. We can look in amazement at a sunrise or, or a sunset, Big God stuff awes us. But too often, too often we overlook those everyday wonders that don't seem to have the Hollywood magic of a beautiful sunset. So honestly now, do you see the divine and everything. Do you see and are you amazed by the sacredness, the holiness of all of life? From the sweetest little flower to the most gigantic tree. Ah, that's easy, sure. What don't you like? See, there's a, there's a little bit harder thing there, isn't there? What doesn't seem so divine and holy and perfect and amazing? Amazing. Amor Tolls in uh, Rules of Civility says one in a thousand can look at the world with amazement. I don't need mean gawking, he says, at the Chrysler building. I'm talking about the wing of a dragonfly, the tail of, of the shoe shiner, walking through an unsullied hour with an unsullied heart. An unsullied What is that? Well, it's a heart that's untarnished, un 
tainted, pure, not necessarily unbroken, because hearts get broken. It's what you do with that heart after it's been broken that decides whether or not it's sully. It's a heart that is not shut down, a heart that is open to others, open to wonder, and willing to embrace all that it sees and feels and knows that all to be the work of creation itself as a natural part of life, a natural part of the miraculous. Because, well, life itself is miraculous. Let me read you the rest of that Tennyson poem. For years, I didn't know there was a rest of the Tennyson poem. I thought it stopped with that little part I read to you. But then I went and looked it up, and I, well, I was amazed. So let me read it to you. Once in a golden hour, I cast to earth the seed. Up there came a flower. The people said, a weed. To and fro they went through my garden bower, and muttering discontent cursed me and my flower. Then it grew so tall, it wore a crown of light. But thieves from o'er the wall stole the seed by night sowed it far and wide by every town and tower, till all the people cried, Splendid is the flower. Read my little fable, he that runs may read. Most can raise the flowers now, for all have got the seed. And some are pretty enough, and some are poor indeed. And now again the people call it, but a weed. Interesting, I think, to note that when things are different than we expect them to be, we tend to judge them, usually in a negative way, rather than appreciating them for what they are. And then when things become too common, we tend to take them for granted and they lose their specialness for us. And the world, the whole world, in the process, loses its luster. Children, like my little boy squatting down looking at the flower in the picture, children know how to see the wonder in the everyday. A mound of dirt becomes a mountain and standing atop it, they can be king or queen and rule the world. A wild flower or a flowering weed becomes the perfect gift for the parent that they love. A seashell has the power to contain the whole of the ocean. You can hear it there if you only listen. Children listen. They look. They take things in. I mean, they really look because everything's new. And everything's something to be curious about, to be amazed by. And so children see things that we have forgotten to see. They have perfected the art of radical amazement. Being awed into gigantic smiles or gales of laughter simply because something is new and exciting and beautiful and grand and different. See, they are amazed by things that are different, 
where we tend to go just the other way. They have perfected radical amazement. But somewhere along the line, we, I don't know, we get it taught out of us. Somewhere we become cynical or, or too busy or just not interested because where will it get us after all? And in that state of mind, well, in that state of mind, we lose the ability to see the wonder that surrounds us every single day, every single minute of every single day. So, if we wanted to find it, where do we look? Elaine de Botton, the uh, Swiss writer and philosopher and, and the founder of the School of Life, don't you love that? Wish I'd thought of it wrote simply, awe is everywhere. We just don't always perceive it. Have you noticed, though, that when you have something specific on your mind, it shows up everywhere? Everywhere. All of a sudden, that thing that you thought was just you noticing something becomes everything, everywhere. You're trying to decide between a blue car and a white car, and all of a sudden there are white cars and blue cars everywhere. You pull into a parking lot, and there's four blue cars on one side and five white cars on the other. Colors, when you start paying attention to them, are everywhere, specific colors. I mean, it shouldn't be too hard to be able to figure out where you could place your awe. There's stuff everywhere to be awed by, to practice radical amazement. Not just, oh, wow, look at that sunset, and then going right back to what it was you were doing before. But radical amazement. Oh, my God, look at that sunset. Thank you, God, for that fabulous sunset. I had to call somebody and tell them to look out the window because the sunset is so amazing. Radical amazement. Amazement that gets you to do funny things, silly things, great things, that lifts your heart, lifts your spirit, changes your mood, does all kinds of wonderful things for you. And I'm sure there's scientific proof on why that's true. I just don't have any statistics on it, so take my word for it. I know that feeling good makes you feel good. I know that being amazed by things lifts your spirit. I know that looking for and finding the divine in everything makes your life better. Makes your soul sing. Most of us are just trying to get by, you know? And we get on that, that hamster wheel of getting up in the morning and doing our work. I won't say going to work because we're not doing that right now. In fact, this, this staying home is probably going to do more for most of us than going to work ever would simply because it gives us an opportunity to look at life differently. And if we decide we decide because it's a decision. If we decide to be amazed by life, we will be. See, it's not about just getting from the cradle to the grave. It's not about just keeping going. Why bother? Abraham Joshua Heschel, who is just one of my favorites, said the greatest problem is not how to continue, but how to exalt our existence. Let me say that again. The greatest problem is not how to continue, but how to exalt our existence. He goes on to say, our goal should be to live life in radical amazement. Get up in the morning and 
look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. To be spiritual, Heschel says, is to be amazed. Now we call ourselves spiritual beings, which means we have the capacity to be amazed. But imagine a day in which, in fact, here's your homework. And I'm going to make it tomorrow before you forget. So write this down. Get up in the morning and look at the world in a way that takes nothing for granted. If you get up in the morning, put your feet on the ground, and walk to the bathroom, you've already messed up the assignment. I want you to be amazed by gravity. The gravity that held you in the bed all night long so that you didn't fall up to the ceiling. The gravity that allowed you to swing around and put your feet on the ground and stand up and stay on the ground. Gravity, amazing. Take nothing for granted. Begin to see everything as phenomenal. Gravity, I think, is phenomenal. The more I think about it, the more it just kind of blows my mind. Phenomenal. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Hard to believe. Incredible. Look at that. You don't have to, like, buy a gravity machine to make it work for you. It's just there, doing its thing. Okay, now, assuming that you've already been awed by gravity in the morning, and, and it's just in, in, incredible for you, and you're so excited about gravity, and you're taking nothing for granted, did you stop to notice that there was air to breathe? Did you? Oh, my God. The absolute one thing that keeps us alive, because if they cut it off, you're gone pretty quick, is right there. Right there. And your lungs know what to do. You don't have to think about breathing. Everything just is factory installed. Wow. It's incredible. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Don't treat life casually. To be truly spiritual is to be amazed. Radically amazed. And what does that do? Well, you don't always have to take my word for something. Every once in a while I look up somebody who knows more than I do, which is a lot of people. Frederick Dodson in parallel universes of self put together this equation. Amazement plus gratitude plus openness plus appreciation equals an irresistible field of energy. Don't you want that? irresistible field of energy. What could you do if you knew that you were an irresistible field of energy? People, places, things. What do you need? You are irresistible. Amazement plus gratitude plus openness plus appreciation. Amazement. Thank you. Wow. Isn't that wonderful? Equals an irresistible field of energy. I love that.
Ernest Holmes once wrote that the profound thought of all ages has stood in awe of life itself. The profound thought and thinkers of all ages have stood in awe of life itself. Life is a miracle. See, just, just waking up in the morning is awesome. It's awesome. So I found myself humming a song today, and it took me a little while to remember to figure out what the song was, because I was humming. And then the words started to come. And I realized that since I was focusing today on radical appreciation, radical awesomeness, that it was the perfect song. And I would sing it if I was a singer, but I'm not. It's from Flower Drum Song, as it turns out. Written by probably my, I see, I'm kind of corny at heart, my favorite all-time lyricist, Oscar Hammerstein the second. But these are the words. My father says that children keep growing. Rivers keep flowing, too. My father says he doesn't know why. But somehow or other, they do. They do. Somehow or other, they do. A hundred million miracles. A hundred million miracles are happening every day. And those who say they don't agree are those who do not hear or see. A hundred million miracles. A hundred million miracles are happening every day. Now I hope that catches in your head, hopefully with a tune attached, because it's really a very catchy little tune. And that'll help keep it in your mind. Because I want you to practice radical amazement. I'd like you to practice it all week. But the assignment is for tomorrow. I won't try to take over your entire life. Just one day. Thursday, August 6th. Homework. Radical amazement. Take nothing for granted. Nothing. Everything is phenomenal. Everything is incredible. Never treat life casually. It is too precious for that. With your eyes and heart and mind wide open, go into life tomorrow and look at the world in a new way because you are a spiritual being. And to be spiritual is to be amazed. Life is wonderful, full of wonder. We walk past it every day and do not see with our eyes wide open what there is to be seen. hundred million miracles are happening every day. Look for them. Expect them. Practice radical amazement. And know that when you do you will be becoming wiser. Socrates, the philosopher, not my cat, said wonder is the beginning of wisdom. So there you go. One day older, one day wiser, one wonder-filled day of radical amazement. It's your homework. 
there. I've done it now. <laughs> so, I expect of you some great reports on your radical amazement. After all, why not? Being amazed makes you happier, doesn't it? I don't think anybody would argue with that. Don't you think? It just makes you feel better. To see a sunset or to really look at a flower. I wish I could show you our fairy garden right now. It's just going berserk. All the little flowers and plants that Cac has, has planted are now bigger flowers and plants. And it's just delightful out there. There are colors everywhere. Purples, of course, and reds and oranges and yellows and blues and whites. And it's just amazing. It looks like a fairy garden. It's a very special place. And I'm sure the fairies are enjoying it. But you know, even if they weren't, I am. It's just heartlifting, exciting. And we've got, we had some geraniums. We, not geraniums. Um, uh, what's that thing that's growing out of the step upstairs? Marigolds. Marigolds. We planted marigolds around some of the other plants last year because we read that marigolds kept predators away. Gosh, it's been over a year we've been trying to get rid of those guys. Anyway, we, we planted marigolds, and, and they seemed to work pretty well. We planted them all over on one side of, of the tiered garden. Many yards away from that. Many, many yards away from that. Coming out between a crack in some stones, there's a marigold growing. Now, at first it was just one flower. Now it's like three. They're bright and cheerful, and nobody ever told them they weren't supposed to be there. And they don't get any water. They get they, Yeah, we never purposely water them, so they're getting offshoot water from somebody somewhere. And they are the healthiest looking little flowers. Now... Would someone call them a weed? They weren't supposed to be there. We didn't plant them there on purpose. I would have trouble thinking of them as a weed. They sure look like a flower to me. And they sure look healthy. And I am awed, awed, and amazed by the strength of a flower that can grow up through a crack in a cement block and thrive. So there's a start for you. Look for flowers growing up through cracks in the sidewalks if you're out. If you're around the house, well, look for flowers that, that are showing up wherever they are. Is it a count your blessings kind of thing? Yeah, it is on one level, but on yet another level, it's more special than that because it's really paying attention to the world around us and being amazed by what's there through no doing of our own. It's just their radical amazement. Thank you for the air. Thank you for the view. Thank you for the ocean that the ships sail on. Thank you for, well, you got it. You know what to do. <laughs> Jennifer says you don't even have to try to believe in gravity. It still works. That's right. See, most of the things that really amaze and awe us will work with or without us. They really will. They're just here for us to enjoy. We had nothing to do with it. But it is ours to recognize and be amazed by it. Well, there's your homework. <laughs> Kirk wants a picture of the fairy garden. I'm doing it now. Okay.
pictures being posted of the fairy garden even as I speak. I forget she can do things over there while I'm over here that, um... Tell them about the, uh, the drunk uh, um, slugs and bears. Oh, well, I don't know how many of you know if you've got a snail problem in your garden, and we did, that, um, snails like beer. I mean, they really, really like beer. And uh, too much. They've got a drinking problem, is what they've got. Yeah. And um, so if you put out like a saucer with a little beer, it doesn't have to be a lot. They're not that big. If you put, a, put out a saucer of beer in your garden, you'll, you'll, um, you'll eliminate your snail problem. They'll die happy. <laughs> yeah, that's, our theory was they die happy. They go swimming, it's they it's not die. like we poisoned them. We just bought them a drink. And... Um, Anyway, it's taking care of the snail problem, and it works. <laughs> I can't. It works. I know. Susan, I you ought to write, Henny. You really ought to write. You express yourself so beautifully. Life in Technicolor. Yeah, that's that's radical amazement. Life in Technicolor. Yes, it is. It's it's seeing the colors and really seeing them. Not just going, oh look, a purple flower, but whoa, what shade of purple is it? How how is it different from other purples? Is it really more shaded than than it is all one color? When you really look, you'll see some amazing things in the everyday. And that creates radical amazement. So have we posted the pictures? Okay. So I'd like to pray, because I always like to pray, and it just seems so good to pray with you. <laughs> the fairies might, in fact, take a nip before the snails, but I, I think they prefer other things than beer, although... I don't know that as a fact. They like root beer. They like root beer? Do they? Mm -hmm. Real homemade kind of root beer, probably. Mm -hmm. mm. The fairies are very cool. And yes, they keep turning the hummingbird nectar purple. I have just finally surrendered to it. The problem with that being, now here's a piece of news I'm sure you didn't know. Ants seem to like purple hummingbird food better than they like red hummingbird food. You don't even have to ask me, do you? So now I have ants to uh, challenge my love of things natural and outdoors. <laughs> but they're okay. I just kind of shake them off into the fairy garden and uh, go fill it up again. So there's that. Let's pray. So... Close your eyes if that's comfortable. If you'd rather just stare at pictures of a fairy garden, that's okay, too. Anything that takes your mind off. Anything that's troubling you. Anything that has got you stirred up. And puts your mind firmly and completely on the divine. Which expresses itself in this world in so many wonderful ways as beauty as music as art as science all infinitely wonderful expressions of the unlimited and you are that as well. An infinite and wonderful expression of the unlimited. You right there. No matter how the day has been, no matter how the week has been, no matter what has been in your life up until this moment, know in this moment that you are 
and individualization of the spirit of creation itself, of the divine. And you are therefore divine and sacred and holy. Mm. And that fact amazes me. Let it amaze you. Let it fill you with wonder and dreams and ideas. And let it motivate you to express your divinity in whatever way is appropriate for you, such that you make this world a better place. Tonight as the, star, as the sky darkens, look for the stars. And know that even if you can't see them, they're there. Just beyond the occlusion of the clouds or the marine layer. There they shine just as brightly as on a clear night. There they are as beautiful as any time in history. And know too that as you think of that, be reminded that you're made of star stuff, God stuff. You are starlight. You are golden. And we are paving our way back to the garden. You are amazing. Do your homework tomorrow and prove it. Just let it be so. And so it is. Another wonderful Wednesday with you. There's no place I'd rather be. You are the very best company, the very best family I could ever ask for. And I am grateful for you. I'd like to thank you for being here. I'd like to thank those of you who share the video. Because um, that's powerful stuff. That means people that we don't even know are watching and taking it in and maybe being just a little bit changed for the better because of it. Thank you for your donations. You have been phenomenal. You really have. Some of you have set up regular accounts. I am so grateful for that. Thank you so much. Others are making regular donations. I'm grateful and, and thrilled, and thank you. If I haven't emailed you or, or written you a little note to say thank you, please know that I've got a little shoulder thing going right now, and I'm trying not, to, <laughs> this is, trying not to use my arms any more than I absolutely have to, and, um, and sitting at the computer and typing is, um, is not quite healed yet. So so bear with me. It is not that I am not grateful. I am deeply grateful. If I haven't told you that yet, um, just know that I am, please. And um, thank you, CAC, Welcome. for all kinds of stuff. <laughs> Welcome. CAC was on air tonight, too, um, on a podcast talking about a machine called a Spooky 2. 
and uh, how could they listen to that if they wanted to? Um, there is a link on my page, uh, Tack Young Facebook too, and they can see it. It's the Art of Healing. It's my podcast, and the Spooky Two is an amazing machine. If you have anything at all wrong with your body or you want to be in balance, it's incredible. It's the wave of the future. You heard it here. Heard it here. Okay. So, um, can you put a link on my webpage? Because yeah. yours sometimes gets confusing. <laughs> so, we'll put a, a link there so you can hear that. Keck does such a wonderful job of that. And she's the interviewer. Um for the art of healing and get some fabulous speakers on board so um, she'll put the information up on that if you'd like to hear it you are certainly welcome and invited to um, to hear her uh, Jennifer we love you too thank you Brenda for being here yeah, Dana, take care of that kitty. We'll put the kitty in our prayers, and then we'll put you in our prayers as well because we know that mamas sometimes suffer worse than the kitties do. <laughs> yes, radical amazement for my shoulder healing. Thank you, Lainey. I'm not going to tell you how long I went without before I went, eh, I could have prayed. Um, but we do that, don't we? And we'd all do it. We all do it. I'm as guilty as anybody else. Um, and it sounds like I'm proud of it. I'm, I'm actually not proud of it. I just, ah, I'm amazed by my humanity, sometimes even more than my divinity. So there we go. It has been another fabulous Wednesday night. I love all of you. Thank you for being here. Um, I'll probably see you on Sunday because that's what we do. And, um, and then again next Wednesday. I love you all. Have a fabulous rest of your week. Practice radical amazement this week. And let me know how it's going with that. I think you're going to be amazed. And so it is. See you Sunday.